As a cinematographer, I always want to give a film look to my images, and that's where the Hansa Pro comes in. The Hansa Pro is a powerful color grading tool. In this video, I'll show you how I use the Hansa Pro to achieve a film look. Now we're in DaVinci Resolve. My current version of the Hansa Pro is 7.2.1. Before applying the Hansa to a node, we need to convert the color space to Rec 709. There are many ways to do that. Personally, I prefer to create a new node and add the color space transform to that node. This way, we have two independent nodes, one for monitoring adjustment made in the Hansa and another for reviewing the Rec 709 image separately. Here, we create a new node and name it CST. Well, the other node is the answer. After that, we first add a color space transform. This footage was shot on every Alexa Mini, so we choose Loxy as the input. You can see that the Rec 709 conversion is now complete. Then we go to the answer setting. Here, we simply keep the source as Rec 709. Another way to convert the color space to Rec 709 is to use the Enhancer's built-in setting. First, disable the CST node, then go to the Enhancer and select the corresponding camera, which is every Alexa Mini. You will automatically choose Loxy. Then we go to disable all tools to turn off all effects. Now you can see that we have a Rec 709 image. Personally, I prefer using a separate CST node. So let's reset the setup. Inside the Enhancer, there are many different functions. But here I will mainly show you the ones I use most often and my personal workflow. Usually I start with print. Let's select Kodak 2383, then enable it. You can see that we already got a nice film look. Next, I usually go to Film Developer and adjust the color boost based on my needs. Then we move to Film Compression, which controls the highlights. You can use it to adjust the highlights to achieve the desired effects while preventing overexposure. Now let's go to Halation. Halation usually create a soft glow around highlights once enabled, you will notice a slight glow in the highlights, typically in red or orange tones. You can toggle it on and off to compare the effects. If you want a stronger halation effect, choose No Ramjet, which makes it more pronounced. You can use Amplify setting to increase or reduce the halation effects. For more precise adjustments, first choose an approximate halation tendency. Then clip custom for final control. The source limiter here acts like a threshold. Raising this value limits halation to only the brightest areas. While lowering it makes more parts of the image affected. Local diffusion controls the spread of halation. While global diffusion impacts the entire image making it warmer if set too high. Be careful when adjusting global diffusion, as it can significantly change the image. Finally, the impact slider controls the overall strength of the halation effects. Setting it to zero removes the effects completely, but we will leave it as is. Next, we move to Bloom. Bloom create an overall glowing effect similar to a promised filter. Once enabled, the entire image becomes softer and brighter. The settings are similar to halation inside the custom panel. Adjusting the impact slider lets you see the difference. The highlights become more radiant. If you want a dreamy effect, Increase Amplify to make the image even softer. 
adjusting diffusion further enhance the glow. At this point, we have already made significant progress. Usually I add film green at the very end since it can slow down the computer and take extra time to render. In general, high ISO means more green. You can adjust the green intensity based on your needs. You can also select custom to modify the green size, amount, and the resolution. But be careful, if the resolution is too low, the entire image may appear blurry. You can also control how the grain is distributed across shadow, mid-tones, and highlights. There are two different film type options, negative and positive. I usually prefer positive because I find negative is a bit too intense. Now let's check out the film section. Usually I find the print setting sufficient for my vlogs and commercial projects. But you can choose different film stuff based on your needs. For example, I'll select Kodak Actor Chrome to show you the before and after effects. Sometimes the film effects might feel too strong, since the enhancer don't have a building opacity control. If you want to separately adjust film and print, you need to create two separate nodes. Here, I split film, print, and other effects into three different nodes. For example, in this node, we enable Kodak Actor Chrome. While in this node, we apply print Kodak 2383. Now we have three separate nodes handling different effects. One for the film look, one for Kodak 2383 print effects, and one for additional effects like halation, bloom, and film green, etc. If you want to reduce the intensity of the last node's effects, I simply lower the strength slightly. You can toggle the node on and off to compare the before and after result. The same applies to print. We can control it separately. You can keep adjusting the impact parameter between the two nodes, film and print, to achieve the desired effect. Let's return to my usual workflow. We start with these two nodes. First, let's check the expand option. It works like contract adjustments, allowing us to tweak the black and white points to modify the image contrast. For example, if I lower the black point, you can see that the image looks flat. So I will increase it slightly. I will also reduce the white point a little to create a balanced contrast. Be careful when adjusting these values, as it's easy to overexpose or underexpose the image. There is also a color mode option. Adjusting contrast can sometimes affect colors. So switching from normal to luma reduce color shifts, making sure only brightness is affected. When making exposure adjustments, we can use the enhancer's monitor function which provides false color and exposure indicators. Let's enable clipping indication. You can see some underexposed shadows and overexposed highlights. So we adjust expanse parameter until these indicators disappear. We can also use the waveform monitor to confirm that the adjustments are accurate. Next, we use false color to analyze the overall exposure. Referring to the scale on the left, purple areas indicate near or complete underexposure, while red areas show overexposed regions. Now let's check overscan. This adds film frames to the image. Once enabled, you will see a film frame appear. There are many options to customize this. First, we can choose different film types. Here we stick with Super 35. We can also adjust the gauge shape between normal, sharp, or rounded, or even disable it completely. Then we can choose a different perforation mode, or we can choose off and just remove it. 
and the film frame can be either vertical or horizontal. We can further tweak the film frame's exposure. Scale it up or down. Adjust the composition. And modify the gate sharpness for a softer look. Enabling steady gate stabilizes the film gate while disabling it at subtle frame movement. You can also flip the frame, like in the 8mm mode, which introduces horizontal flipping. Other options like film damage, film breadth and gate wave enhance the film-like characteristic. Film damage is the dust, hairs, and even scratches that used to be present in the film. First, after selecting the basic form, we can go to custom. And then we can select the amount of dust, hairs, and scratches. You can see that the whole screen has a lot of features, which I won't go into in depth here. Film damage, film breadth, and gate wave. They are all features that enhance the feel of the film. You can see the result after using the enhancer. It really brings a lot of color and texture to the image. You can go to the Dehancer Pro website to sign up and get a one month free trial. I recommend checking out Dehancer's quick guide before using it to better understand its functions. If you decide to buy a subscription, you can use the code CHAN2025 to get a 10% discount. The Enhancer also offers mobile applications, and I will showcase the iOS version at the end of this video. Next, let's take a look at this footage shot with Sony ZV-1. I first set up the node structure. As always, I need to convert the footage's color space to Rec.709. Then input the right color space and gamma settings based on the specific footage. Since this was shot with a Sony ZV-1, let's select S Gamma 3 Cine and S Log 3. Now we have a Rec 709 image. After finishing the Rec 709 conversion, we move on to the answer. At first glance, the overall image is a bit warm, so I start by adjusting the color temperature. Next, let's go to Film Profile. Here I choose Kodak Hectar 100 and enable it. Instantly, we get a film-like effect. Then enable print and select Fuji 3513. The overall image appears a bit dark, but that's okay. I'll adjust the exposure later. Now, let's turn on film grain. As for halation, you can tweak it based on personal preference and needs. Then enable bloom which slightly affects exposure as well. Moving on to exposure adjustments. I have already made some tweaks. I increased the gamma and gain to brighten the overall image. After adjusting the exposure, let's move on to vignette. I usually create a separate node for vignette adjustments because it offers more control. You can see that the effect is quite noticeable, helping to draw attention to the center of the frame. Personally, I feel that building vignette tool in Dehancer is not precise, and the available options don't produce the most ideal results, so I prefer creating my own vignette. Hopefully, Dehancer can improve this feature in the future. Let's check out the final result. After color grading, the overall texture and the feel are much richer, achieving the film look I love. This is a simple note tree. If you need final adjustments, you can add masks and extra notes to have better control over the image. Here, I'm using an iPhone to show you the pictures of the Hanser iOS. You can import photos or videos, and you will immediately see the preset and edit options. There are already plenty of building presets to choose from, which is super convenient. And you can also save your own custom presets. 
In the edit page, most of the features from desktop version are carried over to mobile, so I won't go over them in detail again. As for the controls, you can long press the screen to view the original image before adjustments. At the top, from left to right, there is the waveform display, a reset button, undo and redo options. You can zoom in on the image with your fingers, although it seems the iOS version don't support landscape mode, which I find a bit inconvenient. You can scroll up and down through the adjustment panels and double tap any slider to quickly reset it. The small blue dot on the top right of each icon indicates the feature is enabled. Tap the icon to disable it. When exporting, there are many options for photos. But for videos, you can choose the frame rate, resolution, and bit rate. That's pretty much everything that I wanted to share. Feel free to download it and try it out yourself. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.